You've probably heard the news, we are technically in a recession as of the last GDP report printing a negative 0.9% change for the last quarter and the previous quarter a negative 1.6% change in GDP. In terms of the technical definition, it's not a recession. The technical definition considers a much broader spectrum uh, of data points. We're seeing a slowdown. We're, we're likely to see some slowing of job creation, um, but I do... I, I don't think that that's a recession. Now, depending on who you listen to, some individuals are saying we are not in a recession and even leaders are trying to change the definition of a recession. I will tell you there are two things certain here. First, we are technically in a recession. That is the definition of a recession. It is normal for the economy to have a recession phase after an expansion phase where we saw so much money introduced into the system. This is all part of the economic cycle, which is closely monitored by the Fed, who utilizes different tools such as changing interest rates to influence the movement of money and the direction of the curve. Second thing I can tell you with certainty is there is money to be made in the market during a recession, and there are actually quite numerous ways to achieve this, but for the sake of keeping the video at a reasonable length, we're only going to dive into just a select few ways of approaching this. So let's jump into it and talk about how to make money in a recession. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the study. Going to be talking about how to make money in a recession. And before we proceed any further, please tap that like button. That helps me out a ton and it is greatly appreciated. So you keep hearing about recession and the gloomy sounds of it. And well, you know, it's not all too bad because we do have some strategies and I'm going to share with you three different keys on how to approach investing into a recession. So one, we have options. Um, if you don't know anything about options contracts and options trading, I have a couple videos on that. Please check that out. Very important to know. What I like to do with options is that you can use options to hedge or protect yourself. This can be done by betting on an index such as the XPX or SPY ETF, the SPY, um, which is the top 500 S&P uh, companies bundled into one asset. This is very general and a basic way to get exposure to the overall downside uh, in the market. A common strategy that is taught in many basic securities education classes is that, well, what they do is, and I, and I always thought of this strategy too, like in the beginning of my journey with investing and trading uh, the markets actively, is this kind of strategy, but I wasn't sure how to execute it. And what they do is they show you that you have to look at the total portfolio value. And here for this example, I have 735,000 in the XPX fund. And then the investor wants to insure the portfolio, right? Your client tells you, hey, I need to, you know, protect my portfolio from some future downside. So what they do is that the index value is at 490. They want to protect it with uh, SPX 475 puts. So it's a little bit out there. Um, not too way out there, but, you know, it's within striking distance. And the current index value, 490, right? So... How many puts would be purchased here in this case? Um, and the way how this is done is they take the portfolio value and they divide it by the index value times the contract multiplier, which is going to be a hundred. So that is going to give you about 15 puts to purchase once you put that through. Now, remember, one contract is equivalent to 100 shares. Uh, that's how they come up with that uh, multiplier. Um, now, another example that may be more relatable uh, to more retail investors is using a defined percentage amount. What do I mean by this? Well, Let's say you have 10,000 in your account and you want to apply risk management and define that percentage amount. 
So you have, in, you want to insure your portfolio. Let's say we use uh, 2% and 2% of 10,000 is going to be $200 uh, that we will be using worth of uh, protecting our portfolio with that insurance. And let's say you find some put options out of the money from the underlying asset price. In other words, the stock that you're looking at, and it goes for about eight cents, which would be, again, the equivalent of spending eight dollars because eight cents times 100, right? 100 shares in a contract gives you eight dollars. You can purchase about 25 put options here as your insurance for your trade. And if the trade ends up being successful, then you must decide and have a profit target set with your plan. I created a table here as an example of um, different exits you can set up with this insurance uh, for your 10,000 portfolio. Again, this is all just uh, easy example um, and kind of visualizing it to or aid you in visualizing how to set this up. All of these use the same amount of capital, 25 put entries at 0, uh, 0.08, and you can exit for whether it's a 100% return, 200% return, uh, even it can go wild and above a 1,000% return. This can definitely happen in a very volatile market or any surprise. Uh, we recently had a moment like this in 2020 where we saw crazy returns happen exactly like this, well over a thousand percent, five thousand percent. And, you know, you have to come up with a plan by that time and say, hey, this is enough money. I'm going to take it. This is good insurance money. It's going to cover my losses on my portfolio. So um, that is uh, that example. Now, while we're on the topic of managing risk, right? Um, there's another strategy I like to use with the formula I use on a daily basis whenever I'm looking to buy options in the options market. And that formula we will use is this one right here. And it's going to be the amount paid for the option divided by the days to expiration. So in other words, I want to measure how much I'm spending over the duration of the contract. Let's look at an example here. If we purchase XYZ option, October 21st, 2022, uh, for $2.50, which means a total of uh, $250 was spent. We look at the number of days until expiration, we can divide that total amount paid by the number of expiration uh, days. And this will give us, let's see. Okay, so at the time of recording this video, it's August 18. So until uh, October 21st, that will be 64 days. I spent $250. So I divide the 250 by 64. That's going to give me about $3.90. So that amount is going to tell you that you are spending about almost four dollars per day to be in this insurance contract options trade and you can measure your budget and risks like that you sometimes you don't realize how much money you're spending on these uh, derivatives and very risky assets and this is a great way to remind you hey remember you're spending this kind of money on these options trades so guys when we are protecting ourselves with broad exposure to the SPX or maybe a big stock like Apple or another company that will give you that exposure to the downside to protect yourself from a massive market sell-off, whether it's a economic downturn, recession, or even the 2020 uh, pandemic crash, very good strategy to use uh, purchasing puts uh, with options and you had a couple different ways I just showed you here about three different ways of approaching that now the second point and the se this one's very important um, since we're going to be targeting stocks now and stocks are going to take a big hit in a recession but you know luckily if you have options and you are able to collect that insurance money hey 
that's going to be very helpful because during these big downturns in the market, we can take advantage of buying some of our favorite stocks at deep discount prices. You, in other words, you are going to be seeking value here, a mismatch between the stock price and what the company is actually worth. That's the definition of value right there. And remember, some of the biggest bear markets historically have provided great buying opportunities with very large returns to follow. We can look at March 2020, for example, uh, with the pandemic. And, you know, now when, when buying companies during a time like this, you want to invest in a company that has a moat. And what this means is the company can survive the economic downturn while their competitors struggle. In other words, these great companies we want to invest in, they usually have healthy assets to liabilities, a healthy balance sheet, or strong cash flows to help keep the company afloat. Now, let's look at an example here I have with uh, Thinkorswim. Here we go. And the example I like is Microsoft here. Um, Microsoft during this time and the chart that I, uh, I have here is a weekly chart. So this travels three years back. Each candle here is worth three um, is a week's worth of trading over time. And so we're looking at three years of data here of different prices. And during this window, you can see that we had a very big sell off from a very nice rally and we have a low of $132 with 52 cents. The stock currently uh, today in August 18, 2022 is worth 290 with 17 cents. Microsoft is a great example of owning a high quality business asset. A stock held by numerous investors for large institutions and small retail. This is a quality stock for numerous reasons. They have the healthy financials I was mentioning earlier. They are growing and expanding business with scale. Think of Microsoft subscription services for software, email with Outlook, right? And even gaming exposure with Xbox. They even have exposure to the cloud sector as well. And the company also pays shareholders a dividend, which can compound pretty nicely in the long run as a long-term shareholder. I don't want to get into too many details because, well, you can Google or YouTube search for videos with more detailed explanations on why Microsoft is considered to be a high-quality stock purchase. The main point I am trying to make here is you have a stock here trading at a high of about, let's see, $190 with uh, 70 cents and it dropped to $132 with 52 cents. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to get the bottom perfect. For me during this time, I did actually purchase some shares, but... I got it around the 150, 155 range. So somewhere around uh, here. This is where I purchase. And, you know, this is a company that is growing. They are just about involved in so many different spaces. They can scale. And, and the result from taking advantage of this steep discount within this period of time I was able to build up a nice position here and check this out. Beautiful uptrend. And the stock continued to rally even to a high of almost $350. Um, that, that is just uh, incredible. And the reason for that is because you can have a company here that is considered to be high quality. You want to chase for the companies that are going to present value, quality, the strong moat that I mentioned before, because these are the ones that are going to withstand a economic downturn if we are to enter a uh, deep uh, recession, which, you know, in the beginning of the video, we confirmed that we did have two negative GDPs. So it's a good idea to start thinking about which companies you want to buy and which companies you want to 
try to get a you know a nice deep value discount on because these are very hard to come by when you have opportunities like this especially with a great stock like microsoft um and another example of owning um or strategy right when you're investing into a recession is these companies that you again you want to benefit in the economic downturn environment you want companies that are going to still perform pretty well so you're going to look at companies like um what what is it costco or amazon and um you know those are two big ones with food uh consumer delivery uh services and energy is a big one too you know so this is amazon here you can see a kind of a similar pattern to microsoft what we were just talking about you have this big um oh that's the wrong tool let me get the highlighter here and you can see again in a short period of time and then the stock rapidly appreciated back up to this range then you get the idea um energy too so any energy name um it's going to be again you had a sell off here and uh, around that 2020 timeline that we keep referencing and again it's kind of the same deal here you were able to get into a company at a discount oh let me see yep you have an uptrend right here clearly and you could have bought exxon Mobil at 30 dollars and it is now worth about $94.38. Um, another common field to, to look at is energy. Um, I just told you energy, uh, healthcare. UNH, great name. UNH has been around for a couple years. They keep on expanding. Again, you can see the same pattern here from the March 2020 economic downturn. And boom, what do you have? uptrend and you can do this pattern looking at previous recessions and previous um surprises downsides in the market and, and guess what going back to that um bear market rally chart uh that photo that i had showed earlier you're going to notice that same pattern of investors taking advantage of deep value that is so key these are rare opportunities and moments where you can buy into quality companies and then just hold on to them for the long term build wealth and you can even get paid a dividend over time and that is going to further compound your returns uh so these companies they have an advantage because they can raise and keep prices up with demand they are essential services so that is the second point about stocks that i like to cover and lastly the third one i mean it's kind of common sense but it is so important whenever you're handling your hard-earned money and you really have to tell yourself don't panic please don't panic the market can get bumpy volatile um but you have to remember you like we mentioned earlier long term is the name of the game right you look at the bear market timeline notice how every downturn in the market the overall market has come back to reach newer highs and you can also make gains in the short term with trades, insurance trades, like options we talked about earlier. But you have to be smart. Budget. You have to budget. Use a certain amount you have assigned for these trades. Do not blow the budget. Do not blow up your account. Uh, don't YOLO everything. Do not let it overcome your main goals, your long-term investments. Um, and just don't second guess yourself because before you get into the world of investing or putting your hard earned money into uh, any company, you are going to have a game plan. You are going to have a budget and you are going to follow through with it. You shouldn't be all of a sudden halfway through the plan jumping ship or 
if you bought a home, right, and all of a sudden the value of the home just drops and, and you want to get rid of it, I mean, it, it doesn't really work like that, you know. You want to make sure that you did your homework, you know. You looked at that home, the foundation. Same thing with these stocks and these companies. You looked at the foundation. You looked at the balance sheet. You saw that they had a strong moat. Don't freak out because... These are very rare opportunities that you can take advantage in the stock market. So everyone, um, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to subscribe uh, to stay up to date on any new videos. I'm also on Instagram at The Trade Study where I post some content and fun stuff there too. And I want to say thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.